day to be alive. Let's get this party started. Um, on your mark, Rita? I'm ready. All right, I'd like to uh, call the uh, meeting for Monday, August 16th for the Township Committee sure. uh, to order, please. Please rise for the flag salute. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law by posting a notice of this meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building and by publication in the press of Atlantic City and the Star Ledger on January the 11th, 2021. Mr. Cheek? Here. Mr. Gashard? Present. Mrs. Link? Here. Mr. Patali? Here. Mayor King? Here. At this point, I'd like you to join me in a uh, moment of silence for private reflection. All right, uh, next we'll move on to guest presentations of which I believe um, we have none. Um, do we have anybody, uh, we have no late list? No, sir. And do we have anybody signed up for early public con comment on agenda items, excluding items listed for public hearings? There are several individuals I have signed in, Mayor. Um, do we want to take a look at it and see uh, who we got? Bob, it appears that everyone is signed up for 7D. Um, are we leaving 7D where it's at, or? Um, you can, but the agenda needs to be altered slightly. Okay. Because under the settlement agreement, it's called settlement funds. It's not called performance guarantee. Can't hear him. So the microf you're microphone, you're not. Thank you. So the, the, the resolution is correct, should you choose to approve it. The agenda needs to be tweaked a little bit. Okay, so I guess we'll go ahead, since we are gonna keep it on there, we'll go ahead and um, let's allow uh, the individuals that signed up to speak. So first, uh, I see a Michelle and Lauren. Just please state your name and address for the record, please. Hi. My name is Lauren Barron. I live at 68 Monet Drive, and I'm here on behalf of um, my neighbors that live in uh, the Glen Eyre community. And um, Michelle and I are just gonna you know, speak to introduce our concerns to you. The residents of the Glen Eyre development, Monet Drive in Hamilton Township, New Jersey, would like to raise concerns over an issue with a non-functioning storm basin on Cates Road between Monet Drive at, and the Mays Landing Country Club. The lack of response and remediation on the part of Univest, Chisano, CNC, Hamilton Township about the details involved with the lack of completion of the development project is at a point where we, the residents, feel we need to take action. The residents of Glen Eyre want to know who is legally responsible for fix fixing the basin to meet the township standards. We respectfully request the committee to step in and help our residents. We plan to attend the said meeting uh, to share our concerns. That's why we're here today. According to township standards, this basin must absorb, infiltrate standing storm water within 72 hours, which this basin fails to do and often is filled with a foot or more of water for weeks up to a month without draining given the season. This basin is not an approved wet basin. It appears that some of the standing water issues that were already in existence are now exacerbated and the basin seems to have deeper gullies where water collects for longer periods of time. In December 2020, residents were informed by a Zoom meeting that Univest, Chisano, C, uh, and CNC was resigning from the board and 
running the HOA. Other attendees in that meeting included Brian Richardson, Executive Vice President and Chief uh, Financial Officer of Univest, Bank and Trust Company, Charles Gemmel, Esquire of the law firm, um, Gemmel, Todd, and Marenich, sorry if I'm mispronouncing. You got that right. And, and Bill Bowman of the Bowman Group. And Michelle, if you'd like to take over just this is long. <laughs> so I'm Michelle Thompson, I'm at 58 Monet. Um, in January of 2021, the HOA was hurriedly formed following the sudden withdrawal of the project by Univest Trezano and CNC after the last house was built. The residents of Glen Eyre Homeowners Association were handed the responsibility of running the HOA with the exception of the street and basin. As per Zach Barquette, Univest representative, and Bill Bowman, they would continue the maintenance on the basin and street until all work and remediation was completed. According to notices residents received at the closing of their homes, the street paving was to be completed once 75% of the homes were built. That did not happen in June 2021, 100% were completed. It should be noted that the street was completed in May of 2021. For background purposes, the basin failure issue was brought to the attention of Bill Bowman, representative for Univest, Chisano, CNC, the ha and Hamilton Township. Bill Bowman, who is physically located in Florida, has limited availability for on-site inspections or meetings. Bill has advised in a formal letter that he would be responsible for coordinating issues with the basin, roadway, sidewalks, etc., during the turnover of the project. In the fall of 2020, Bowman advised multiple homeowners that the issue with the basin would be remediated, remediated before the property would be turned over to the HOA. On December 15, 2020, conference call with residents and rep representatives from Univest further assured residents that drainage issues with the basin would be remediated once the season changed and the ground thawed. Residents were assured that Univest and Bowman would continue the maintenance on these areas. We were advised by Bill Bowman and the township engineer that testing would be done on the soil. It is unknown to residents or the HOA if this testing has been completed, but since then we actually do know that that was not completed. Right. We have been advised several times by Bill Bowman that there was too much water in the basin for testing or work to be completed. Bill Bowman has canceled multiple on-site meetings with HOA board and township representation. In a June 4th, 2021 meeting Bowman held with one of the HOA board members, the township, he intentionally did not include the other board members or homeowners. Bowman offered the HOA board $15,000 in exchange for some bug spray. They wanted to spray instead of fixing the problem. Um, in a June 8th, 2021 email, Bowman advised the Univest, Chisano, and CNC would provide a backhoe with an operator so Steve Philippone can dig test holes and develop his conclusions. Once Steve completes his investigation, <coughs> we will present various affordable solutions to the HOA. That's a quote. Based on the lack of transparency on the part of Univest, Trezano, CNC, it appears they intend to leave the basin as is in a non-functioning state. Residents are aware that there are likely issues with non-functioning bas basins as it relates to the New Jersey Pine Link Commission. Residents on Monet Drive have already been experiencing issues with the water levels linked to the basin failure, including limiting depths of in-ground pools, constantly running sub pumps which is raising people's electric power usage insect infestation that prevents us from using our backyards and other dangers that come with standing water and children being in the area <clears throat> based on the review of prior township committee meeting minutes it appears this is a common issue with storm basins in hamilton township likely caused by the amount of clay in the soil for example the prior issues addressed by the committee for the leafy track drainage basin, the Walmart basin, and the basins in the Tavistock development, which required remediation. Residents of Glen Eyre are concerned that the township will release the money, the bond money, to Univest without proper remediation, which may result in damages to township home, homeowners and adjacent properties. In addition, the liability of standing water and related threats to public safety, it also poses serious health concerns related to transmissible insect or wildlife-borne diseases. Residents are aware of the Township Committee's assistance in past cases involving improperly functioning basins and hope the committee will consider holding the bond for the Glen Eyre development performance guaranteed to resolve the drainage, drainage basin issues. Okay. We appreciate your comments. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Nicasia, did I get that correctly?
Good evening. My name is Nikasia Carries. I live at 18 Monet Drive, and I am one of three board members for the Resident Homeowners Association for Glen Eyre Community, located on Monet Drive in Mays Landing. On behalf of myself and our other two board members, Ed Hambor and Don, who is not here because he is currently waiting, uh, walking the basin to get an estimate for remediation, and our fellow Glen Eyre residents who are here tonight, would you stand, please? We thank the planning committee for its time this evening and appreciate its time at the previous planning meeting two weeks ago. We also specifically appreciate committee man Richard Cheek, township solicitor Robert Sandman, and township engineer Steve Philippone for their time this past Friday evening when we met for close to two hours um, on August 13th and um, a handful of residents from our board were present. Glen Eyre is a small one street community of 37 homes. Our Resident Homeowners Association was established less than one year ago as Lauren and uh, Michelle commented in a very harried fashion. We had no three month overlay which was supposed to happen in the rules and regulations. Um, we are here again this evening to express our concerns to the dry basin, as to the dry basin located in our community and the handling of related information and documentation of the basin, as well as representations for the handing over from the bank association to a resident association. As Michelle and Lauren mentioned, there are a number of concerns not limited to um, the lack of drainage, uh, water and flooding issues where we have pictures of residents riding canoes and kids fishing in our basin for months. And the mosquito and insect issues along with the drowning hazard, the health issues that come along with mosquito bites. Um, we do have residents here tonight who probably will not show you their legs, but we have some serious proof. Um, at the meeting on Friday with Mr. Cheek, Mr. Sandman, and Mr. Philippone, we were informed that the township's position is that the basin is the responsibility of the homeowners association. However, the obligation to make sure the basin is working properly and that the township is, pro ha is providing enough security to make sure the basin is constructed and functioning properly is on the township engineer and this committee. An unsuspecting homeowners association should not be handed a basin that does not function properly and to be told it's the HOA's responsibility to fix it, thus letting the developer and or bank off the hook. This is a concern not only for us, but could affect any resident or future resident of Hamilton Township looking to move into a new development. If you ask any of our residents who purchased their home after 2015, they will tell you that they would not have purchased a home in this county knowing that they had to pay for that basin. The committee has the opportunity this evening to show existing residents and send a message to the future residents that it will not leave homeowners out to dry and to burden them with the responsibility for unsuspecting basin, rem unsuspecting basin remediation issues that should have been addressed by the original developer or surety. A topic for vote tonight is to reduce from $250,000 to $23,335 a performance bond to Univest Bank. The residents of Glen Eyre request that the committee delay the vote until the next meeting to give Univest, the board, and the committee the opportunity to come up with an amicable solution of drainage basin issues. This would also provide you a, an opportunity to see two pieces of documentation that we have from Univest on their letterhead and the meeting notes that their recording, uh, Univest recorded the meeting, the first meeting, um, and the quote from there is, um, Bill provided an update on the status of the basin and other site work. Bill indicated there will, needs to be further work completed in the drainage basin to remediate water pooling and that a soil analysis is being conducted. This same soil analysis has been referenced in emails as well. Bill also indicated that all sidewalks would be would, with tripping hazards were repaired and that any remaining form boards would be removed as soon as weather permitting. They still have not been removed. Not that that matters. Um, and then the floor was opened up for questions where I myself requested a key 
to the lock on the fence so we could go and clean up some of the debris that had been left behind and was unsightly to our neighborhood. Uh, delaying this vote and this release of funds would also give the universe, universe the opportunity to complete some of the work it promised to perform in the basin, which was never completed. Um, I do have here a scope of work from Univest that says um, they will clear the basin bottom and sides of the sides of the wild growth and debris and regrade the bottom of the basin. Once they regrade the bottom of the basin, they would seed it and the sides as required. The Homeowners Association would also request the township to supply Glen Air detailed information on the bond. At the meeting on Friday, we were told the bond release is not for the basin and that any chance of questioning that release had to be done in 2008 when the um, basin was signed off on and they have four years after that. That would bring us to 2012. Most of our homes had not been built until 2015. That basin was approved in 2008 and no further action is required from the bank builder at this point. And that's something we were also told. Mr. Sandman also informed us that Univest offered the township $37,500 to be released to Glen Eyre for use as we desire. So whether we chose to fix the basin or not, that money would be held by the township until we requested it. At that point, we all knew that it was obvious we needed to get some estimates. And so I have here tonight an estimate from a company who does work in this township and surrounding townships. And they gave an estimate, and this is one of three that we will be submitting. This is for $94,546,000 for the quickest and easiest remediation that could be performed. This company also said they can guarantee that they would do the work for this, this, this money. So we are asking if you can provide us with the name of the company who gave that $37,500 estimate that we see that it's a real company and they're saying they would do the work for that amount of money. Um, whether the, for the basin, I'm oh, sorry, the opinions of Mr. Sandman and Mr. Philippone were that the amount would be more than enough to cover any work we would want to do in the basin. We would also request that the committee not move forward on a vote tonight to release any money under the performance bond and to give the HOA an opportunity to review any estimate that demonstrates that 37,500 would be sufficient to fix the basin with our own engineer. We subsequently shared with the three gentlemen on Friday that representatives of Univest communicated with residents multiple times that they would be remediating the basin, including soil testing boring. In one email we have, Bill Bowman actually says that Steve will be, Steve Philippone will be performing the testing and Steve was copied on that email with no response. So via the emails and conference calls, we clearly have been told things were going to get better and get fixed. We also shared um, that uh, when we requested updates for the basin several times um, via email and phone calls to Bill Bowman, Zach Parquette with Unifest, and Mr. Philippone, who was also copied on these emails, there was no response. We reached out to uh, Mr. Philippone on June 4th and asked for an update, and re I requested a meeting personally and never got a response. We never heard anything different in regards to the basin until the meeting three nights ago. For this reason, as well, we request a delay in bond release and also an extension in time for the $37,500 offer from Univest through the township so that everyone has a chance to see all documentation and make a good decision. We have received one quote from a company who performs this work, which I mentioned earlier, and as we speak, we have one board member who's walking the basin, and we have another board member who is walking the basin with an estimator on another day. Given that we got this information on Friday at 545, this was the best we could do in a very short amount of time. Um, we have shown in this short amount of time that we are given good faith, and we are showing our good faith in trying to do our part in research and gathering information as well to find a remedy. We believe more time and consideration of details needs to be afforded so that the residents of the township 
and the committee can fully vet out what needs to be done with the basin and by whom. And so that we can, again, all review the same materials. Um, we do have an OPRA form that we've filled out. We're not sure if it's correct, but I did speak with um, Mrs. Martino, and she is going to look it over and let me know what we need to fix on there as well. Okay. Um, we do feel, though, for sure, it should not be the current resident association, which, again, was only created seven, less than seven months ago. Rather, it should be the responsibility of either Univest or the township. We do appreciate your time and consideration this evening, and we will continue to request the township's assistance in bringing the basin to meet dry basin operating regulations, which ultimately is what we are requesting for the dry basin to meet regulations. Thank you. Um, just real quick, the uh, documents that you referred to in your, uh, is, does Mr. Sandman have copies of all that? No, as a matter of fact, when I pointed them out on Friday night, there was a look of surprise and shock, so I don't think that they've Would you make sure that those. he's yes, afforded copies of that? You can do that through Rita. If you drop them off, she'll make sure that he gets them, okay? Yes, sir. And, um, and the email, the email one, Phil, Phil, uh, Mr. Philippone should have in his email, but I'm willing to re-forward that as well. Okay. It's the Univest meeting minutes that they typed up. We did not type those. And, and like you said, you're, there's someone out getting another estimate now, and you expect another one within a few days? Yes, so we will have three. Days. Okay. And it's for the basic, it's a basic fix. Okay. It's not matching what's behind us in their basement. I believe they have 12 inches of sand, but this one is for six inches of sand, and it's for 90, over $94,000. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and I would just say, since everyone is, is signed up for 7D, if you're called up next, if, if your point has already been made, just for the interest of time, I understand it's a very yes. passionate issue. If your point's already been made, please be conscious of the, uh, of the sure. time. So um, I would like to add that this um, estimate that was given to us um, and signed was also, um, it did come with an explanation that a geotech, um, and he gave the name, would really determine if we could get away with six inches of soil or if it needed to be 12 inches, in which case when I asked about the price for 12 inches, it was $180,000. All right. Thank you. We'll see what the other folks bring in. All right. Uh, next, we have Beth. <coughs> well, I'm not used to being a taller person. <laughs> Hi, my name is Beth Bigalski, and I live and own 54 Monet Drive in the Glen Eyre development. I'm here to oppose the bond reduction for the performance guarantee at the Glen Eyre. At the meeting with uh, Councilmember Cheek, um, Township Attorney Sandman and Township Engineer Steve Philippone, Glen Eyre residents were informed that the bond reduction being voted on tonight includes funds for work completed that including the installation of fencing around the basin by a Univest contractor. When the contractor removed trees that had been growing in the basin for years, um, they took heavy equipment inside the basin and in doing so it became very noticeable to residents that the basin had gotten worse and significantly worse. Um, so behind my house at 54 Monet, there had been minimal water prior to that excavation and installing the fences, and now it's constantly, um, not during the summer, else, elsewhere during the year, it's about a foot. Um, so Univest had repeatedly told us, as Nikki mentioned, that they were responsible for maintaining the basin, which is obvious to anybody who's been out there that that has not happened because the grass is two feet high. Um, and additionally, during our meeting last Friday, Mr. Philippone noted that prior bond money was held while Univest repaired faulty sidewalks as they posed a safety issue. So we ask, is the basin flooded not considered a safety issue also? Um, so we're asking the committee to consider holding the bond reduction um, or if they could consider um, changing the amount of the bond reduction so that it's more in line with the estimates given for repairs of the basin. And I'm aware that at least one, one council member has previously visited the basin, but I have a couple pictures that I'd like to share with the committee. Um, the first one is from December 2020. I'll bring it up. Okay. Um, it's from December 9th, 2020. And when I went to the DEP's website, I found that it had only rained 1.4 inches between December 1st and December 9th, which is the date of the photo, with the last amount of rain falling on December 5th. So this is after four days of no rain. The second photo is from April 4th, 2021. Between April 13th and April 21st, there had only been 0.24 inches of rain in May's Landing. 0.21 inches had occurred between 
April 14th and April 15th, and 0.3 inches on April 19th. That was all of the rain. And then the last photos are from October 25th, 2020, and there had been no rain in May's Landing since October 16th, 2020. So this will give a picture of what it looks like outside of August. These are extra copies? Yeah. Okay, thank you. In addition to those photos, we have more pictures that we can provide the committee. Um, and we also have some do drone coverage of flyovers of the basin okay. to show the complete extent of flooding. Beth, thank you. Thank you yep. for your time. Um, next, we have Bev. I don't think she's here. I think she's, I think she's ill. Okay. She had to sign her name in, but I don't think she was able to make it. Okay. She was in our speaking orders. Fantastic. Thank you. Aaron? Happy one less person, right? <laughs> no, listen, I mean, you have a genuine concern, and we're here to listen to it. Good evening, and again, thank you for your time. <clears throat> Two things I would like to say is, number one, when, when I purchased this development from CNC Chisano Homes, it was my understanding that they had taken over an existing development that went bankrupt, and they would, you know, take care of the infrastructure, which is what a developer does when they go in and do a development and they work within the guidance of the township to do roads and drainage and, and basins and what have you. And one of the other things that, you know, I had referenced before I bought a home in Mays Landing, I was very impressed with Mays Landing's permit process and how, you know, when my house was being built, there was a good electrical inspection, there was a plumbing inspection, there was a con uh, concrete inspection, and then a, and a final CO. And, that was one of the things that, that I was happy about of buying in Mays Landing, that I would be confident that my house would be built appropriately. And the one thing that I'm kind of perplexed on is with all those inspections and COs that were going on and being, you know, done by the township with CNC and Shazano Homes, how come they weren't then brought in to you know, being responsible for the infrastructure of the development that they were selling to all these people when we bought at the time of development. Because I was quoted and, and led to believe that Chisano had taken over a bankrupt, uh, you know, sub, subdivision and they were now coming in to make things right and sell homes, you know, to us with the correct guise of the right permits and, and approvals, you know, that they needed to make everything right to sell to us. Uh, thank you again for your time. Thank you. Uh, next, Stephen, please. Uh, Stephen Schneiderman, 66 Monet Drive. Uh, we moved into our home about 14 years ago. And for the first two years, everything was great. And then we had some rain, and a lot of rain. And it ended up I had a foot of water in my basement. So I wasn't prepared for that because I didn't think that that would be a problem. So I went out and got pumps, and it took me two pumps to keep the water from going any higher. Uh, since then, uh, there's been uh, multiple times that I've had water. I'm prepared for it, but there's been water uh, enough that I have to keep pumping. Now this last rain, I had a pump for two solid months just to keep the water from getting on the surface of my basement. And I think if any of you had a house like that, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be too happy with it. And it also uh, messes around with our property values. And it'd be hard to sell a house that's getting water in the basement every time it rains. So that's my complaint. I'm glad you took uh, time to listen to it. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, and the next person we have, I believe it looks like Walkins. Good evening. Um, my name is Watkins Moisey. I'm 34 Mone Drive. Um, I just want to add to this frustrating situation that's going on at um, our neighborhood. I moved. I moved then. This September night will be a year since our house basically closed. We moved then. And I did some research, talked to some friends. They said this is going to be a great area. 
I've been in Ms. Landing since 2007, you know, from town home and to this new home, which my family, we really happy to, you know, to be there. And then I'm dealing with this situation that's happening, the lack of draining of that basin and everything. I don't want to add to whatever they already said. I appreciate which, that. Um, but my concern tonight as a medical provider and a medical professional, I would say, I think this action and something must be done in order to prevent this to be continuing the way it's going. And those mosquitoes, the insect, my family, my daughter, my son, they so afraid to even go outside for, outside for five minutes. I would tell them, you're gonna be fine, just go for a little bit. And the next thing I come, when they come back in the house, I would see bump, I would see bump all over my daughter's face, her arms. So now I don't even tell them to go outside no more because they, they have a fear. They fear, I would, the other day I saw my son, he's running. He's 13 years old. I said, you, you got to be very strong like that, you okay? Just be strong. And I saw him running, and I'm like, man, what's going on? And I look in the camera to say, he fell. I'm like, wow, what's going on? Man, that, this insect is chasing me. I said, oh, my God. This is the reason why I'm here tonight. I said, I have to be here just, just to say something, just to, they can hear what I'm going through over there, which... I believe the, one of the causes of that basin that being drained properly and causing all these insects, all these mosquitoes to be around. And I think, you know, something, some consideration must be taken, some step just to get this being fixed. This is the reason why I am here today, just to add my voice to, th to them and to show how hard it is for me, especially for my family. Thank you so much, and I hope that you. this is being taken to heart. Thank you very much. All right. Um, thank you for your comments. We will. Uh, is there any comments from committee? Uh, or handle it when we get to seven D. We'll get to seven D. All right. Um, thank you. We'll, we'll have further discussion when we get to that agenda item. Um, next, we have. Um, Discussions, formal actions may be taken. I see that we have our esteemed MUA director uh, has entered the building and he has some uh, uh, best practices, uh, resolution for best practices he's going to talk about. Said, I'm, my name is Art Shanker. I am the uh, executive director of the MUA, which for, I don't know of all of you, but at least some of you, uh, we control the water. We treat the water and take care of the sewer for, the, for a good portion of the town. Um, as we stand right now, we have 5,291 accounts, um, 10,586 water service units, and sewer service units stand at 10,832. We had an increase of 442 water units this year and an increase of 240 uh, sewer units. So we are growing uh, a little bit, not, not a whole lot, not, not like it was years ago. Our water mains are um, about 79.5 miles, uh, which is quite a bit. Uh, water valves, we have about 1,520, and I'll talk about some of that later. We have a 458 fire hydrants. Uh, we have 53.8 sewer gravity mains and sewer forest mains. We have 11.4 miles. Sewer pump stations, we have 14, and sewer manholes, we have 1,247. So we have two, uh, two groups here. We have capital projects going on. We have a lot of projects happening right now. Uh, one of the main and most important ones is our water main replacement uh, due to lead line abatement, which is all over the news right now. Uh, $1.1 trillion in infrastructure 
uh, which is great. Uh, unfortunately, that infrastructure bill started with about 45 billion of it going to water rain replacements, and it, by the time it got to where it passed, it's at 15 billion. So, um, sorry to say, but we have applied to the I Bank for a total of 4.3 million dollars, which is the remainder of our water project. Uh, really hoping that we see some kind of help there, but I'm not really counting on it with the numbers dropping the way they are. So, um, so on top of that, you know, on a, on a yearly, uh, yearly basis, we end up putting aside uh, $75,000 to replace our vehicles. Right now, uh, if you've driven by Hess School, you might have seen the pump station is all torn apart. Uh, we have a $375,000 rehabilitation to that which is now going to become a wet well instead of a dry well and I won't get into all that because it's not very exciting. Uh, we're looking to complete that around uh, early November. Um, we put in a new boiler last year. We're going to do some other upgrades to the building um, to make it uh, a little nicer. Uh, we did a phone system upgrade last year to bring our phone system out of the uh, 20th century. Um, the future capital projects we have, well five electrical, which is basically an electrical upgrade. Again, some of that, the well five is up uh, by uh, Harding Lakes area. It's not, it's very old and it needed to be. It's small, but it's old and, and we're doing an upgrade there. It'll start in October, 2021. That came in at $112,400. Well eight, which is a, one of our Bigger Wells is over across the street from Target. You'll see that being torn apart. That's $1.1 million, and that also starts in October. Uh, Farragut Avenue sewer rehabilitation is out the bid right now. We're looking somewhere in the neighborhood of $175,000, and that <coughs> is something that I learned about. Um, Farragut Avenue and 9th Street have seen some deterioration um, because that's directly where some of the restaurants dump and because of the lack of maintenance of their grease traps, we got a lot of grease in those lines. And now when we jet them clean, you see the deterioration. So what we're gonna try and do, because those sewer mains are 20 feet in the ground, we're gonna do a process called sleeving. Um, it seems that we've tried it a couple other places throughout the township, it's worked very well. But it can extend the life of this, these pipes, it's, it's, very, it's worth it, because going down 20 feet is not a, not a job you want. These mains are very old. These mains are from the early 1900s, so they've been around for a while. Um, New York Avenue Bridge was one that came up. I'm sure you're all aware of it. Uh, we just went, well, we didn't go to bid, but the county went out to bid. Um, <coughs> R.E. Pearson got awarded the job. Our part of it is that we have a water main that goes across that bridge, so they're going to uh, replace it. Uh, kind of bring it out in the middle of the road and then bring it back. That's going to cost $166,000. So one of the main things that we are concerned with now is the Water, Water Quality Accountability Act. It's kind of forcing what you're seeing with the government now with the water uh, mains and, and what they're doing with lead and stuff like that. This all really kicked off because of Flint, Michigan, which we all know was not a pretty scene. Um, so some of the major cities uh, including uh, Newark, New Jersey, which has just had most of their lead whips removed. Um, they got paid for by the government, though, which we will not have that happen here. So it started back in October of 18, uh, of 18 uh, by the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, and it's, we, we submit annual certifications indicating compliance with certain state and federal requirements. Um, safe drinking water regulations, uh, safe New Jersey safe water drinking regulations, licensing of water supply and water, wastewater operators, compliance with water supply allocation permits, and compliance with Water Quality Accountability Act. So basically, one of the main things is here is that we have to, which we have already done, upgrade cyber protection because water facilities have become a target in the uh, in the cyber world and the terrorist world. Um, also, we are, you know, we are mandated, which we, we did before anyway, but we're mandated now to exercise all the valves so we know that they work. Uh, when, uh, you know, when you have 1,520 valves, that's a lot of exercising. So 
Um, it, there's a lot that goes on with this. It, it, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but there's, there's a lot of things that we have to do every year, year in and year out, uh, to stay compliant. Right now we have contracts with the South Jersey Transportation Authority. We take care of all their, their pressure uh, sewer line that runs from Hamilton all the way down to Atlantic City. Uh, we take care of all their pump stations and, and their pipe for them. We also are contracted with Wayman Township MUA. We supply all their water, take all their, uh, their sewer, and um, we take care of um, including billing and collections. So we do all that for them. Uh, we make a payment to the township. It varies from year to year. It hovers around 250000 This year was $245,816. And through the year 2021, we paid to the township uh, $2,700,000. And I believe that started in 2009. Um, Any way so we can get that number up? What's that? Any way we can get that number up? No, there's a law that says you can only take so much. <laughs> No harm in asking. Yeah, yeah. So we're in a situation now with this, um, with the water main project. It's going to eat up an incredible amount of money. Um, the governor just signed a bill, probably, I think it was last month, and now the clock is ticking. So I believe we have roughly 10 years to get this done. We have a uh, six phase, um, the project is six phases, and we should, ha we should be well ahead of that 10 year curve. So. It all depends on, right now we're waiting to hear back from the iBank to see if we can get any funding from them. If we can, that's going to help a lot. If we can't, then we're going to try and stretch this, um, but at the same time, you know, get it done. Uh, the other thing that I, I, you know, we have talked about before and I'd like to bring up again is that as we do these streets, and all these streets are in downtown Mays Landing. We just did Third Street, um, and we'd like to work with the township we have certain phasing, it, we can change that around, it doesn't matter. If you have certain roads that you know you're going to do, or we can work with your road program to do, we can get in first, and then we're, you know, they're not, they're, they don't have a road. Contra the road that's messed up. The contractor we just had did a very nice job, they're very narrow uh, path for the, the new main. So it was a it was a very clean job there's not a lot of bumpy roads and all that kind of stuff so they did a very nice job with it and you know when you get a good contractor you like to get the same contract every time but unfortunately in government that's not how it works so really that's all i have to, to, to talk about if you guys have any questions i can answer rodney you have these pipeline sleeves you talk about how long do they last the sleeving for the um the sewer line I don't know exactly, but I would say quite a while. It's like a poly line that they kind of, they take, they roll it out inside the pipe and blow it up and it adheres to the pipe. So it's, we actually have one line that's down on Farragut Avenue where there's more water going in it from the outside than there is going down the pipe. And that's not good. That's a bad thing because that just deteriorates the pipe more and more and more. So the groundwater seeping in through and that's, that's a problem. As a contractor, we've done the pipeline sleeving, and it's a very, very, very good. It is. Quick, inexpensive, 20 inexpensive. foot down. It Keyword. is the best thing you could possibly do. <laughs> yes, keyword is inexpensive. We're probably going to be able to do most of Farragut Avenue from Shaner down to 9th for well under 200000 Yes. And I know that's a lot of money, but in our world, that's not a lot of money. No, it'd be two million if you especially compared to digging it up yeah, and having yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And, and trust me and you know Carl you're in the business <laughs> when you get down 20 feet it's a lot yeah. it's a real lot and there's a safety factor too yeah it's, absolutely you're, you're you're keeping a lot of people safe doing it that yep. way uh, I just like to say we, we work together on third street absolutely um, and and Steve and and you and and that worked out very very well um, and I like to say when it comes to getting these funds from the from the infrastructure bill, unfortunately, we have an MUA that's very well run, and so we kind of get uh, that kind of gets held against us, I guess. Uh, you know, well, it's, this town in general, I believe, because we don't fall into that urban area type of thing, it, it, it's harder to get uh, funding. Yeah, um, they'll, they're, you're going to see. Well, they've already taken care of Newark, and again, there's their problem in Newark it. was a lot worse than what they we need have it. here. But I just want to, you know, kudos to you for, for the MUA always doing such a good job. Um, 
the with the grease going in and hurt and hurting our lines is there any way we can figure out who's doing it and so this is something a, i'm looking into have now. a conversation with them and say help us come on well, we've we've talked to them but you're to a point so usually this the grease traps fall under the health department we don't have a health department in this town so where i worked in atlantic city a lot you would see it it was a common thing the inspector would come in and inspect it atlantic city has their own health department and that's where it falls under so i think a conversation with the county to see where they're at with this type of thing i don't know if they have a health department but i don't know if this is part of their thing whether that's a, this is what something they can help us with because we have it in a couple areas um, we're seeing a little bit over at the Benderson project, nothing serious, but with those folks there, you know, they're a bigger company, you talk to them and now they're going to put it on a regular schedule. So it all depends on who you're dealing with. Understood. So I'd like to see if we can't, and if we can't get it through the county, it may be worthwhile to, to talk to our construction department here in the township to see if we can't just do an inspection on some of these smaller restaurants that are just they're ignoring the situation is that a conversation you want us to institute with the county or is that something that you're going to do and will be involved in um, I'm going to talk with the county and see what what the guideline what their guidelines are and what they'll handle if they don't then we're gonna have you and I should sit down or the three of us or right. all of us can sit down and talk about you know what we can do because it's 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 affecting it it's and it's happening in a couple places and some some places are pretty bad how does that affect the health of the, uh, the area? How does that affect what? I'm sorry. The health of the area. Uh, it doesn't really affect the health of the area. It, it just affects the, the piping. The, ba the simple fact is a grease trap obviously is very simple. The water goes through it with grease in it. It separates the grease. When there's so much grease in that grease trap, it doesn't separate it anymore. It just runs over top and goes down the drain. And that's where we end up with a problem. And then you end up having to clean that up and mm -hmm. with your stuff and it is i mean right. in a roundabout way it is a health issue when when if you if you take if you extrapolate it all the way out we had an issue on 9th street right before i came on board i don't know if you heard about it but the the the, uh, the little strip mall there is tied into mm -hmm. and one of the houses across the street the way it was tied in it was almost like crossing each other so when the grease built up in there there was no place for the rest of it to go so it became a problem we've since had that fixed and now we're moving on but the, well, unfortunately, in this business, you find out when something's wrong when it's all over the ground, and that's not a pretty sight. Well, I appreciate no. you um, bringing, uh, d issuing the report to us this evening so we understand what, what actually does happen over there um, on an annual basis. We certainly don't want any roads torn up after they're paved, so I appreciate you having the foresight to work along with um, uh, uh, the liaisons for the road program and make sure that we coordinate that. Um, and, and of course, um, let's keep those checks coming to the township. Um, and if uh, once you initiate with the county, um, again, if you want to get me involved or us involved, I'd be more than happy to. And um, let's start there, and then we can go ahead and move forward with our construction department if we have to. Okay. All right. Very good. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yep. All right. Next, we'll move on to item B, which is uh, Project Labor Agreement PLA for the Leapy Park. On the MUA? Okay. I apologize. Um, we're we're going to go back to A. Um, there is a resolution committee attached to it. Um, that uh, the MUA is uh, asking us to acknowledge and adopt. Um, is there any questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. I have second. a motion. I have a second. Um, Rita, could we? Uh, we can do a. Uh, um, all in favor. All in favor, please. Uh, so all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. Now, thank you, Bob. Now we'll move on to B. Uh, Project Labor Agreement PLA for Leapy Park. Uh, Committeeman Cheek, uh, you want to give us the background? If I could put a couple of words in. This sure. was my idea. This is uh, Leapy Park will be a prevailing wage job no matter what. This, after 
dealing with the South Jersey building trades and whatnot will assure or give us advantage that local residents would be the ones that would be working on this project versus out of town, North Jersey, Central Jersey, people coming in, coming out of vans, working all day and going home. To my, in my opinion, we're investing in our kids in the Leapy Park. Now we're investing in our citizens and families as well. I agree. I agree. I think it's a, it's a great idea, and um, I'm happy to see it on the agenda. Um, is there any action that we need to take, or are we just going to move forward when it would actually go out the bid? We're just going to authorize this evening that, um, that when it does go out the bid, that we want to make sure that it includes a PLA, correct? I assume that would be the spec. Pardon me? That would be the specification. I would assume so, yes. yes. Okay. Mr. Well, I would request well, a, a motion authorizing to be included in the bid specification so when they're prepared, it's in the minutes that the QPA can make sure it's in there. Yeah. Um, Do a roll call. Is there any other questions or comments? Well, I would say that this is a, a, a very good proposal. Um, it will help us help our people in this area retain jobs, and it will continue to feed into our area rather than it going up north or wherever uh, the contractors come from. I you. think it would be an excellent um, thing to agree to. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion um, to make sure that the PLA is included uh, in the bid specs when we do go out for bid. Um, Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, Rita, could I get a roll call, please? Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Batali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carried. Jim, am I doing good? Am I following where, I'm need, where I need to be? Yes, very good. All right, next we'll move on to item four, public hearing and adoption of ordinances. Uh, first, we have A, 1965-2021. This is an ordinance to amend Chapter 238 of the Code of the Township of Hamilton entitled Property Maintenance to Regulate Invasive Plant Species. Um, you'll recall we talked about this uh, at the last meeting. Um, we had a discussion on it, and it was specifically uh, in regards to bamboo and other invasive species. So. Um, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to speak on this matter? Please, uh, if you'd stand up at the microphone, uh, state your name and address for the record, please. How you doing? My name is Ted Marks, and I live at 5724 Main Street, Mays Landon. And my wife uh, lives at 50, we live jointly. We have four lots that uh, border uh, Good neighbors. Uh, we have a bamboo grove that we've been maintaining for 30 years. This bamboo ordinance directly affects me. Can I go on? Sure, of course. Uh, okay. um, yeah, this ordinance came about uh, because I had a, 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 a violation sent to me uh, on an ordinance, uh, <clears throat> and it clearly said to me uh, one word it said weeds. Okay? So when I did get to speak to the zoning officer, um, or the enforcement officer. Uh, he said, uh, can't be higher than 10 inches. What was the complaint? Can't tell me. Who complained? Can't tell me. OK, so I got something that's you consider a grass, and you consider that a weed It can't be higher than 10 inches. He left and said he was going to speak to his boss. And then the ordinance six weeks ago came about. Now, Mr. Sandman, I believe Mr. Sandman spoke uh, six weeks ago, I guess, and introduced that he was going to introduce, the ordinance was going to be introduced. I'm not sure the sequence exactly, but he modeled it or referenced uh, <clears throat> Linwood. Now, we looked at Linwood, and we saw the ordinance in Linwood, a barrier. Sounds good. Barrier's no problem. <sighs> when the ordinance came out, I saw it in the paper. I couldn't believe my eyes. It states, when properly confined, as described herein, all bamboo and invasive species plants shall be 
located, trimmed, and maintained so that no part of the plant shall be closer than 10 feet from the property line or taller than 8 feet. We're right back to ground zero here. 10 inches, 8 feet on bamboo, you're killing it. It can't grow. So let me just explain something very quick, okay? Because we've been growing this for almost 30 years, okay? We use it to barrier ourselves from what was an incredible disturbance that we had every single night for 15 years. Flashing lights, flashing the whole area, making it seem like a crime scene every single night. You get headaches looking at it. My neighbor got headaches looking at it. We hated it. Nobody could do anything about it. I could. I planted bamboo. I controlled the density of the bamboo. Stopped it. Also, the big uh, LED 6,000K lamps attached to the utility poles. It's like laser beams coming at you. So once again, bamboo to the rescue. Fills it in nicely. Okay, eight feet's not gonna work. And then again, my yard floods. And I'm speaking to the people here that have the flooding problem. I solved mine. I put bamboo in there. Bamboo sucks water like a thirsty camel. <laughs> it sucks up water. <laughs> you plant in. bamboo where you got a water problem, and you don't have a water problem. Problem solved in an air. Very <laughs> simple. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> Honestly, if you maintain it. Gentlemen. Now, I just want to say real briefly, bamboo is the easiest thing in the world to maintain if you do it in the spring. If you let a bamboo shoot, now once again, I say easy, but you have to be persistent. All you need to do is knock over the little shoots when they're a foot high. It will leave no stub, no stump in the ground. You let it grow one season, now you've got a stump to deal with. But you knock a bamboo, and by the way, you don't even have to do it yourself. I have people come over every season and collect them. They eat them. They love them. You, if you've eaten any Asian food and stir fries, you probably ate some of my bamboo. The man I have takes them, goes out with bushels every week. For eight weeks, that's when they harvest them. You don't even have to do it. If you put a Craigslist notice in, you'll have people lined up, like blueberries or anything else, strawberries. They want them. They're good. And that's what I'm saying. So my point is, is that the bamboo has been a resource that we share with everybody. Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, they all come here for fishing poles. Everybody wants the stakes. So many things are built. We give it away free. We don't charge anybody for it. If you're coming in and you need a couple here, a couple there, no problem. Hell, if you want 100 of them, well, we'll talk. But it's, uh, you know, but I have to cut them because the way to manage it properly is you have to flush it to the ground. You have to cut them very close. That way you don't have a problem. I am here to tell you that I have an innovation that makes bamboo management even easier. It's basically several parts, but basically it's giant blades that are round attached to an old rototiller, very low power, just nice and consistent and it slices the rhizome. Once you slice the rhizome, you can peel it like, back like a banana peel. It's very easy. But if you go in there with a backhoe, you're gonna rip it up and it's got all the side pieces, and you're ripping up everything. You're making a big mess. So I'm offering anybody that has a problem with bamboo, and they didn't intentionally make this problem, it just bamboo is one of them things. Uh, I will leave, I will make this very brief. I'll make this question to everybody here. And this question is, you can ask anybody, and if you don't believe me, you can ask Google. What is the most useful plant on Earth? Very simple question, eight words. Ask your Google. <laughs> this is saying, you know, I'm just not making this up. You better be careful Google, with the answer. What is the most useful plant on Earth? Bamboo. According to me, Did now, you get her to state her uh, name? Hold on, that wasn't, record, that wasn't a recording. <laughs> Honest to God, you can ask any, you can ask Siri, Alexa, no matter what. Now, this bamboo ordinance is so restrictive that it went as far as to vines and ivy and everything that everybody grows. It's a landscape. And by the way, bamboo, no fertilizer. <laughs> you don't have to do anything for it, no chemicals at all. And the same way with ivy. My land cover is ivy, a lot of ivy. No chemicals, no fertilizers. It just grows. Well, that I'll leave you. I, I, did I get everything I want to say? On the six. 
Oh, one other thing. Uh, yeah, one more thing. It's unfortunate that this, I say this for last, I really didn't want to have to say this. But I believe that this ordinance is written that it could be in, I'm not saying when or anybody, but it leaves it the control to a person with what I can see very little oversight. And the punitive damages makes it almost, well, actually, it makes it criminal to the point where if I don't abide and don't follow this ordinance, I could be locked up. Now, they said, Mr. Salmon said that's hardly ever used. Well, then why put it in there? I'm just saying. I mean, to have grow a plant that is food, could you be criminalized for it? And yes, it's in there. So like, once again, um, I'll let you go. I just thank you for listening to me. I, I think you're hitting the fly with a sledgehammer here. Uh, you really are. And really, honestly, we really need an outreach program to anybody that has bamboo. People like myself who've been doing it for 30 plus years, or at least. Um, uh, this, is, uh, this is a plant that cleans the air 365 days. It pulls more carbon dioxide out of the air five times than any tree plant, any other plant. It produces 33% more oxygen than trees. Um, and it's something that once you have it, you don't want to give it up. You're asking me to cut something down to eight feet. I can't do that. I'm just saying. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, question. Mr. Marks, you have a question. Could you answer? Well, I can answer any question you Please. want. Please. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Is this a question for me? Yeah, it's for you. Okay, go ahead. If I can remember what it was. <laughs> Um, do you, need any, I, you know, actually, um, actually, I'll let somebody else speak and then, then come up. Do you want to speak on this? Okay. Uh, Beth? You're on the same item here? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. My name's Beth Moriarty. I live at 973 Morningside Drive. And I have two concerns. Uh, the first is the weed issue because I have zoysia grass, and I don't know if any of you have that, but if it goes into your neighbor's yard, he has zoysia grass too. I live on the lake. I have Phragmites now that are very mighty along the lake bed. They didn't come from me. They came from my neighbor's property, so I prob probably could have a, something leveled on him for doing that to me. And I have ivy that grows up the hill, and it could eventually take over the O'Brien's house. So what's a weed? That's my first concern. My second is that one night I spent uh, the evening having dinner on Sue's porch. And um, at, say, the sun sets at 8.30 and about 8.25, suddenly there was a racket in the backyard. And it was an unbelievable amount of bird cacophony. And I said to Ted, what's going on? I'm thinking there's some animal up there eating birds. And he said, they've just come home. They're talking about where they were today. And he said, give it a chance. Wait until sunset. So we looked at the watch, and he said, sunset's in another two minutes. And in two minutes, there was dead silence. So that only happens because you've got all that uh, growth up there that they are living in at night. At eight feet, there is no place for them to go. They'll have to find some other place, that's sort of like the Lorax, you know. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone that wishes to speak? Please stand up and. Susan Lazarczyk, resident. Hi, um, I'm not a big fan of bamboo, but I'm friends with, I've been friends with Sue and Ted for a long time. And it's my understanding, I haven't read the ordinance, I apologize, but it is my understanding that there is possible punitive um, information in the ordinance and it's my understanding that um, they have agreed to maintain and follow regulations as far as keeping it off property and I just think um, if there is punitive information in the ordinance that it it's unskillful um, because it doesn't make any sense to charge them money or to put them in jail or something uh, I was talking to a friend she's like well if they need an ordinance for bamboo that means it's difficult to get rid of and you can't expect someone to, um, to do that right away. And, you know, they do want to maintain it, and that's not, you know, they like it. 
Um, but I mean, I think if they're maintaining it properly, then there shouldn't be penalties in there that be expected to um, punitive penalties in there. Like if they're one of, you know, they're residents, they've done a lot of stuff for the municipality, they're good residents and, um, you know, there shouldn't be penalties in there. Well, if they're willing to work with the municipality. The, the penalties as it appears, and Mr. Sammy, you can correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, the penalty is not for you on your property. It's, it's, the penalty kicks in if it encroaches upon and makes a, 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 a unsavory condition for your neighbor's property or surrounding properties. That's the way I'm reading the encroachment. Am I incorrect in reading it that way, Mr. Sandman, or? Okay. Um, I can help you out, Mayor. Uh, that provision for enforcement is our boilerplate language in our code for any violation of a township standard is that penalty plus, and or 90 days in a community service as it. So you have to violate the ordinance first. So you'll be given notice to abate the violation. In this instance, the violation would be if it grows onto your neighbor's property, you're notified to cut it back to your property line and you fail to do that in a timely fashion. If they issue a summons to bring you to municipal court for that code violation, the judge has the discretion to impose a fine of that nature. Uh, the purpose is not to collect money from people, is to keep the bamboo confined to your property. But that's just your, your boilerplate language you use for a violation of any township ordinance. I appreciate that. I mean, it, it, I'm reading through it, Bob, and it does state in several different areas that it is um, for encroachment or invasion of any adjoining private or public property. I thought of my question. What, uh, Mr. Marks, did you want the uh, township to do with respect to the ordinance? I'm, just, I'm trying to get a question. Who was the township? Well, I'd like you to get rid of the ordinance, but uh, that might not happen. Um, I would like to see that uh, the eight foot, 10 foot setback, especially for existent, to be struck um, for all purposes. Um, you're growing it on your property and you're growing it. Um, the 10 foot setback and the eight foot height is just not consistent with the growth of, of this plant. Uh, it's, an, it's an always green plant and uh, what it does is it, it works, it works well. But to make restrictions that won't allow it to grow properly. You can't control its height. It's going to grow between 20, 25, even 30 feet. The other day, someone told me, um, I'm trying to think, told me they cut down a grove and they cut down these, I think, um, big, m massive, massive stalks. And I was just thinking about how, how many, how much wildlife was lost because of that. And that was an old growth, but it, it's, it's just one of those things. It grows tall, you can't say eight feet. So if you're asking me what I would want it to do, okay, well certainly those kind of restrictions just don't, are not compatible with bamboo. And perhaps as Beth had spoken about ivy and things like that, people have ivy. Now this will turn neighbors against neighbors. You have a patch of land that was growing some bamboo and for years and it bothered nobody, but you have some grudge, all of a sudden, now you can just drop a dime on them and cost them thousands and thousands of dollars of confinement and possibly restorations where it was no issue before. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, one of the issues in the ordinance where there is possibly a little confusion is we did provide an exemption for people like Mr. Marks where we said that where currently exists, uh, prior to the effective day of this ordinance, there is only a duty to confine it to their property. To refer to what section, Peter, please? It is uh, D1, 238-18 D1, duty to confine. Uh, subparagraph one starts, if there exists any species okay. commonly known okay. as or any other evasive species on a property within township of, Hamilton prior to effective day of this article, there shall be a duty to confine imposed upon the owner of the property. The duty to confine shall require owners not to prevent the encroachment, spread of evasion or intrusion or uh, onto other private property, public property, or public rights of way. And then later in 230 19, 
we talk about when properly confined herein, all bamboo shall be 10 feet of the property line and no more than eight feet tall. The, the intent of the drafter was anybody who doesn't have bamboo on the day of the adoption of it, they choose to have bamboo, they're restricted to the 10 feet of the property line, eight foot in height. The people who had it at the adoption of the ordinance their only confinement is to their property. The height requirement setback doesn't apply to them. I did have a conversation with Mr. Marks uh, last Thursday. Well, he sort of agreed with me. He didn't want to run the risk of somebody interpreting it differently at some future date, that it doesn't clarify that. So a possible amendment is to spell out that those who bamboo exist, that section 238-20, uh, I mean, 19 concerning this setback and the height does not apply to those who have bamboo on the date that the ordinance is adopted. And that would exempt Mr. Marks out from the height requirement and to cut anything back from where he currently maintains it on his property. Okay. I, I met Mr. Uh, Marks out on his property and he, he taught me a, a, a lot of stuff. So I know there's some talk about uh, Ivy now I went through all of the, on, on um, 238.18b, I went through all the different names, going through everything, and everything is, was pretty much, uh, Ted, some type of bamboo, until it got to the poison oak or ivy, correct? Uh, yeah, I, 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 can I speak? I don't want to cut you off there. Yes, um, but it is, they were only examples, but not inclusive, I mean exclusive. Anyway, there were many species. Um, yeah, there were examples, many species. but it was broad. It right, was right. left open to interpretation. Right. Um, and that being said, uh, I don't want to take anyone too much more of your time on this, but the, the idea is that uh, with the confinement and the cutback on the eight feet, well, this ordinance says that if you want to have the benefits of bamboo and you want the clean air that it can generate, okay, I could see perhaps a setback on future generations of bamboo. But to tell future people that want to grow bamboo that you can only grow it to eight feet high, you might as well tell them you can't grow the bamboo. I mean, yeah, you can kind of dwarf it down something like, but what effects is it going to have? How are, how are you going to have a habitat out of it? How is it going to be able to use for, for Boy Scouts fishing poles or any other project you want? It's useless. It's, you might as well not have it then. You're just basically prohibiting people from growing it. So that eight foot thing is just a, it just doesn't work. It doesn't belong there. There's no reason to have it there that I can see. Why, who came up with eight feet? I'd just like to know. I mean, what, what rationale was it to, to keep it at eight feet? What is the, is there an average height for being uh, It depends species? on the species. Uh, the runner that I, I use, the one, the one that I have, which the reason is it grows, it, it's, fast growing and it's hardy in this climate. You can have a clumper, uh, clumpers, which I don't know why, and also they said no clumpers either. Well, everyone lets clumpers in Linwood, everyone has clumpers. Clumpers are the, are the angel of, uh, of uh, bamboo, they don't run. But they don't grow fast either and they're expensive and they're not hardy up, on the, up in this climate. You get some to grow, but anyway, the runner needs to be, tw um, to answer your question, 20 to 25 feet or taller. Depends. I have a few that get a little taller than that, and those are, quite frankly, very valuable. Uh, to, you mentioned uh, fishing poles. I, I grew up on Main Street. Okay. Every year we harvested bamboo, dried it out, and then used it to catch perch. We're out on Main trestle. Street. Main right on Main Street next to the Mill Street Pub. Okay, where'd you get your bamboo? Uh, actually, in Lauderdale. There was a house okay. on, on uh, Oak Street that and, had. And we invite anybody that. And, um, Perfect. We would every year cut them down and then take them home, dry them out, and then catch fish off the, yes. the trestle and, with it. Yes, and, if you, and, you, and the top part where the leaves are are pretty much useful. That's turned into mulch. And by the way, bamboo is a low nitrogen mulch. Um, when you compost bamboo, bamboo and it's a little bit more work, you get a low nitrogen draw, which means you don't have to add nitrogen back into the soil. You don't have to add fertilizer. So when you use a hardwood mulch that you get from Home Depot or Lowe's, that draws nitrogen out of the air and therefore out of the soil and therefore you have to add more bamboo doesn't do that which makes it more expensive mulch thank you 
Uh, Ted, how many people had issues with the bamboo in this community? Did you find out through opering? I the, uh, couldn't find anybody else. That officially listed as a bamboo complaint. Um, we found that we did the OPR search on uh, bamboo complaints, and apparently we are the target. And uh, how many species of birds are in your bamboo stand? Can you? I did a phone app. Well, I have a phone app that identifies them. I'm, I'm not a birder, but I came up with at least a half a dozen. But the primary one are the starlings. Uh, they, they fly up. Do you see them in the big flocks? And they're, they're, they eat mosquitoes, and they're, they, they're very good pest control to keep other things down. And we have thousands of starlings. And they move on, but they'll come back, and they, they leave in the winter. And that's pretty much uh, it. I don't know, six or so identifiers, because you saw them yet. It's, I don't know if you ever used the app, but it's pretty neat. Um, uh, but the, it has a benefit to... Um control the insect population without, oh, yeah, the without just spraying for, you know, mosquitoes and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. As bats do as well. I mean, bats are good mosquito control. Um, starlings are great mosquito. Um, I'll just leave it at that. I don't know too well, much about, you know, their dietary habits, but um, basically they eat mosquitoes. We don't have a real mosquito problem, although um, off the river, we tend to see if the water, air comes off, the breeze comes off the river, we'll see a few more mosquitoes than usual. But other than that, no, that's, uh, they're just uh, part of the nature. Uh, I, and I do invite anybody up, anybody on, and, well, anybody that wants to, um, <clears throat> to in, take a tour and show you the process and the machinery that's required. And uh, I, wouldn't, I would recommend to anybody that's going to start a bamboo farm or a bamboo grove, you need a good chipper. Because you get a lot, you have to deal with it. And if you can't deal, we send nothing to, we send nothing out on our grove. Nothing goes to the county or the to trash disposal whatsoever. Everything we, everything we do, we keep and or give away to people that use it. Um, I had the occasion to visit Ted this after this morning, and I was amazed at one of his inventions on controlling the rhizomes that, you know. Uh, continue to grow out from the bamboo, and it, it's a fantastic invention. Thank you. And and it's, if anyone has a problem with it, Ted will be right there to help you. And that's what I'm suggesting: um, that the people that have a problem with bamboo, neighbors that have them, to help them solve it, and not put a punitive or any kind of restrictions on a plant. That, as you heard, uh, you know, Google say. Just saying. Thank you. Hey. I got sit down. That's first. So, um, as I'm reading through this, uh, our administrator said that that if you wanted to, you could still grow bamboo, but you got to keep it to the ten foot uh, ten foot away from any property. But then you look at two thirty eight eighteen C. It says prohibition. Period. No owner, tenant, or occupant of a property or person, corporation, or other entity shall plant, install, or cause, or permit the planting or installation of invasive plant species such as bamboo within any lot and or parcel of ground anywhere within the township. So... I think that's very restrictive. I think we need to... Rewrite this. Rewrite this. Amend it. Yes, I agree with it. It should be amended. Um, let's uh, allow let's allow the, the public hearing to continue. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're, you're <laughs> Mr. Blicky. Blicky. Um, Harry Blicky, 275 uh, Clarkstown Road. Um, I would like to speak in favor of the ordinance, uh, but before I do so, I'd like to say that everything that this man had to say, I'm 100% in agreement. Bamboo is a great material. I'm an engineer. You can use it for flooring, roofing, bicycle frames. You can eat it. Everything he has says is true, and he seems, and his testimony is, He's a responsible property owner. The problem is, and I think the intent of this ordinance is, what about the intrusion and the invasion on other people's property? That's where the problem lies. In my neighborhood, we have a property owner who refuses to do anything about it. It is encroaching on other people's property. She yells at us, complains about us when we try to cut it down. 
it's encroaching on the public right of way and it's pulling up the asphalt in our driveway. So that's where the problem lies. So what do you do there? Um, and then as far as the setback, uh, I contend that one, one thing I might disagree with you, it is a green plant, but it does die. And the stalks do fall down and they block the public right of way. So there's an issue there with the maintenance of, of this particular property owner and the confinement of it. If, I, I, if she wants to turn her whole backyard into a bamboo farm, great, I'm all for it. I have nothing against bamboo. It's when it starts encroaching on my property, neighbor's property, that, or public right of way, that's where the issue lies. And we're, and we're, we're just finding there's, we just need to tweak it a little bit. I mean, we, we brought this ordinance up, you yeah. know, because we, we've had people, you know, come to us and say that it's a problem. I mean, you know, the township ourselves, we have problems with different spots with township property. Yeah. So just we're, uh, I'm suggesting that we tweak it a little bit. Okay. We, uh, but we understand. And I would amend, agree with that. Amend it. This is why we have public hearings yep. before we actually adopt an ordinance. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Miss yeah. Hopkins. Hi, Sue Hopkins. Oh, God, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Put that okay, back. I'm just kidding. Um, I, I absolutely think the responsible bamboo owner here has got some, some uh, great ideas. And bamboo is, is an invasive species. But as I was listening to Harry, what do you do with the irresponsible uh, neighbor that doesn't comply and it's almost the same thing as what do you do with the irresponsible neighbor that doesn't cut down the dead tree that's hanging over the property lines and what do you do with the responsible neighbor that's you know we, we could go on and on and on and and I would ask us to not put a restrictive ordinance in like this but to really take a step back and figure a way to handle it um, because I think if you if you go down the path of restricting weeds um, the weed, by definition, in Webster is anything you don't want in your yard. And that's too broad that's and it's true. too evasive. I, I agree with Judy's comments. I think it's a Pandora's box. So I just want to throw that out there. Anyone else wish to speak? Mr. Stry? Mayor, thank you. Um, I have two trains of thinking on the ordinance. Um, the, the, the one thing that struck me when uh, Mr. Mark said that the reason he started growing bamboo 30 years ago was from the flashing lights next door. I picked up on that, Mr. Stryker. Okay. The flashing lights that Mr. Marks was protecting himself from was a illegal zoning use. Mm -hmm. So that's my first track. If the township, and I, and I think I, I could go on for quite a while, on the subject of the township being negligent in enforcing code enforcement and zoning regulations in the town. So here's a perfect example of a either intended or unintended consequence when the township did not enforce flashing lights, and I think we're talking about his neighbor. Anybody that's driven by, I think the business has left, I'm not sure, but certainly for years the flashing lights was clearly and everybody could see it. Nobody did anything about it. So Mr. Marks, in his defense, created his own defense of what the township mm -hmm. didn't do. So ironically, 30 years later, there is an ordinance directed at Mr. Marks from what he tried to protect his health and safety from. I don't years think ago. it was directed at Mr. Yeah, Marks. I, wanna, I think that well, not okay. at all. I'll, I'll take that back. Mm -hmm. However, there's mm -hmm. only one. It seems as though, because there's, you yourself, I think, mentioned that you went over and spoke with yeah, Mr. Marks. Yeah, he keeps it well. We, it's not aimed at him at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's my, th that's my first uh, track. And I'd like to go on a little bit more uh, with property maintenance. We have monuments to failures of property maintenance in Hamilton Township and Mays Landing. It can start with the Wheaton Factory, the Duberson School, the American Legion building, uh, the two houses across the street from the Wheaton building. Could we keep it to the um, well? To property the I think. I, I think well, this it's, isn't property maintenance. It's, this it's is strictly about well, this it ordinance. Is, it is listed as property maintenance. It's, it's only property agenda, maintenance. So. Okay. If you would let me speak, I, I'll sit down a lot quicker. Okay. If you want to argue <laughs> with me, okay. Just let me speak. Let me make my comments, and I'll sit down. Okay. Um, 
So anyway, with property maintenance, I think it's a little bit ironic that we're putting another property maintenance ordinance in that may or may not be selectively enforced. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that at that. Now, with the, the whole idea of the, the bamboo and the in, invasive species, um, there are a lot of, and I think we've heard, uh, a lot of in, uh, invasive species. Mm -hmm. I have ivy on my own property. I, I happen to like it. Somebody mentioned Phragmites along the river. That is an invasive species. So if you're going to pass an ordinance, okay, um, on invasive species, just make sure it's fair and equal to everybody rather than just picking a few. Okay. So, uh, so actually, I am, I am not in favor of this ordinance because it has a lot of flaws, both on enforcement and content. So I hope you take those things into consideration. It needs a lot of work, but it's not really a fair uh, ordinance, particularly in a township which is the largest in the state of New Jersey, 117 square miles. We have very little code enforcement. So if we have 70 acre zones, 10 acre zones, five acre zones, so I don't think a, a, an ordinance like this can be fairly um, applied in the largest municipality and state with all kinds of different uh, uh, environments. And you can go along the river and you're going to find uh, Phragmites from, and we have a river that goes from one end to the other. Right. So thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to speak on this top topic? I'll entertain a motion to close the public portion. So moved. So moved. I have a motion, a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, committee, what's your pleasure? I'd like to table this and uh, make some adjustments. Um, there is a motion to table. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by. Before you vote, can you tell me when you're tabling it to? You're going to table uh, a specific was, meeting? Yes. because Next it, meeting. Yes. So no, no need to re-notice re on this, correct? Correct. If you, I'm sorry? It's going to be amended. Yes. Amend it. So you're going to have to reopen the public hearing for the amendments only. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's right. fine. Thank you. So am I advertising another public hearing? Not at this time, not until they proffer the amendments. So the minister reflect it's September 7th is the next township committee meeting. So the motion is to table to the September 7th meeting. It will be listed there. And you could bring up your proposed amendments at that time. You and then you'll have a solicitor. Okay. Um, there is a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. There is a second. Um, read a roll call, please. Mr. Chief? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. <coughs> oh, yes. And I want to thank the public for their input. Um, and what does Siri say, by the way? Same thing. Uh, I'm going to double check you tonight after the meeting, just so you know. This is a fact checking uh, <laughs> exhibition here. All right, so uh, we'll carry this over on uh, September uh, 7th, taking in all the comments from the public. I appreciate the, the, um, the back and forth on both sides, and, and I'm sure we can come up with a workable ordinance, okay? Thank you. All right, next we'll move on to B. Ordinance 1966-2021, this is an ordinance to vacate the public alley connected to 2nd Avenue and is situated in Block 758 in the Township of Hamilton and to release and relinquish the public rights therein. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone that wishes to speak on this matter? Yes. Sir? It's the uh, American Legion building. Not a problem. Could you just state your name and address for the record, please? Robert Brower, 206 Hanthorne Street. Thank you, Robert. Um, about a month ago, I received the form in the mail to vote for or against the vacate of the paper street behind my house. Um, at that time, I didn't vote for it because we didn't have any answers to questions we had. We were told that someone would contact us to let us know how the paper street behind us would be divided up amongst mm -hmm. the residents there. So. We don't know how it's going to be divided. We don't know how it'll affect our taxes. We don't know if one person will take control of the whole thing. Um, basically, we just have questions about that. Sure. Mr. Salmon, if you? Yes, this was the subject matter of a, of a conversation with Ms. Gibbons, our redeveloping attorney. 
And the thought was that we would uh, eliminate part of the vacation um, to stop it between, it's, it's hard to read these numbers. Okay. Okay. That's lot seven. Lots, between lot seven and lot eight. Um, Could you uh, give us, tell us where you're at on, on, on the ordinance? Well, I, where I'm at on the ordinance is I think you should table this ordinance. Okay. I it's think not. that this needs to be better spelled out. It needs to be drafted a little bit differently. And here's why. Usually when you vacate a street, it's a situation like in Laureldale. The property owner owns up to the midpoint of the street subject to the greater right of the public to use it as a street if and when it gets developed. Under that circumstance, the property owner on each side owns the fee simple ownership underneath the paper street. So you're vacating it and you're giving it back. This particular alley is not that situation. And that's what we discussed with Emily. I, I thought we were gonna table this. Okay. And I think we really should. Can, can I just ask for the record, are you in favor of accepting part of the property or you do not want part because you fit your... It depends on the information I get. Will my taxes go up? You know, yeah. How much a of the property... Any time, any time you accept additional property, it's <laughs> going to be assessed. Know. But, you know, we, how much of the property, uh, you know, I, years ago, I've lived there 32 years. So I've basically, for the last 32 years, my area, I have done the maintenance, the mowing of it. I'm on hand form. I thought it was a little uh, alleyway. Yeah, so I'm dilapidated. Yeah, but I think it is. Oh, the alley goes back here. The alley kind of goes into the yours. It ends up over on Hanthor. I would ask that this be tabled. Um, all right, before we do that, Mr. Salmon, why don't we, is, is there any other comments that you would like? No, I mean, basically, I just want more information before. I, I think you're going to get it. Good. So, all right. That sounds great. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on this before we take action? I'll entertain a motion to close the public portion. So, so moved. Move. Second. Um, uh, we have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Um, if um, at this point, uh, at the advice of our solicitor, I will entertain a motion to table this and uh, would be, be tabling this to September 7th September also? September 7th. This is uh, constitute a public announcement that we're tabling until that time. Okay. That would so alleviate the need for uh, publication for you. I have a motion for tabling. Second. I have a second. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. It is tabled until the next meeting. Um, before we go on to the introduction of ordinances, we're going to take a uh, about a three-minute recess here. You good with that, Mr. Cheek? Yes, sir. Okay. We're going to return to uh, the meeting. Uh, we're going to move on to 5A, um, introduction of ordinances, uh, public hearing to be held September 7th, 2021. We're going to have a busy meeting that night. Mm -hmm. uh, ordinance 1967 2021, an ordinance amending Chapter 167 of the Township Code entitled Fees to provide for fees for certain land development applications in the Township of Hamilton, County of Atlantic. Mr. Administrator? Uh, this was for the ordinance that you recently adopted for appeals from the Historical Preservation Committee to go to the Planning Board. This establishes a application fee for commercial properties and residential properties to file their appeal. A motion. I, I think it's discussion. fair. I'm sorry? I think it's fair. Okay. I have a motion then. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Uh, second. Rita, can we get a roll call, please? Mr. Cheek. Yes. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Batali. No. Mayor Kane. Yes. Four <laughs> yes, one no. Motion carries. Next we have B, Ordinance 1968-2021. This is an ordinance amending Chapter 269 of the Township Code entitled Taxation by establishing Article 3 entitled Totally Disabled Veterans Property Tax Exemption. Uh, the intention of this ordinance, Mayor, is to put in writing the township's existing policy on processing veterans exemptions requests. We support this ordinance anytime we can help our veterans out. 
Uh, it's a positive thing. Committee, what's your pleasure? Questions, mm -hmm. comments? Motion? Yeah, motion to uh, move uh, ordinance 1968-2021. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Uh, Rita, roll call, please. Mr. Cheek. Yes, and I thank all the veterans we have. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Batali. Yes. Mayor King. Uh, happy to see this on here, and I vote yes. Oh, yes, and introduced. Uh, next, we'll move on to 6A. Um, this is awards of bids and contracts or change orders. Uh, this is a resolution authorizing contract award for option two, year two of bid 2019-07, emergency generator service and maintenance contract to GenServe, Atlantic Switch and Generator, Haynesport, New Jersey, in the amount of $10,421 as well as $120 per hour for the additional work and 20% parts markup not to exceed $50,000. Committee? So moved. I have a motion. Second. second. I have a second. Read a roll call, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mr. Cashard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carried. All right, next we have the consent agenda items A through I. Um, so we, we are going to move D for discussion. And uh, is there any other items that any member wants moved for discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion for A through C and E through I, please. So moved. I have a motion. I have a second. Uh, read a roll call, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mr. Gashard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mr. Kane? Yes. Well, yes, and carried. Um, now we're going to discuss 7D. Mr. Seaman, please. Yes. I've done considerable research on this. Um, my opinions are not going to be well received. Uh, Mr. Cheek has been on the phone with me all weekend to find a way, if possible, to discuss carrying this to allow them additional time. I believe that the law does not permit that. Um, I made that known. Uh, however, there is one thing that has happened that may be a consequence to each of you to know. You may not have seen it, but we received an email, I believe, Thursday. Maybe it was when it was Thursday from the bonding company, American Southern. And American Southern objects to the release of this money at this time until such time as it gets a full accounting. The history is too long to go into right now. But the bottom line is that American Southern put up to $250,000. They are what I'm calling the bonding company. And more importantly, this is not a request for a bond reduction. This is a request for a distribution of settlement proceeds. Calling this a bond is incorrect. But if it were a bond, that would implicate the municipal land use law. Um, but what happened that's new is the bonding company, or the, uh, yeah, the bonding company, Am South, put up the 250, and they threatened us with a lawsuit on Thursday that unless the bank, Univest, who used to be Fox Chase, provides them with an accounting to, to establish that all of the money that Fox Chase spent was on account of the, quote, bonded improvements, that is, the public areas within the development. When this settlement occurred, the idea was to use the $250,000 and spend it as the costs were incurred by the contractors. Fox Chase didn't do that. They paid for the contractors and never touched the $250,000. It wasn't until I think May or June that the clerk received a letter saying, could you release our money or at least send the engineer out to inspect the engineer inspected, he made a report. Um, that report was limited to, to four trees and to determine whether or not the basin elevation was proper. 
and that's what's being held back the 23,000 out of the 250 the only thing that's new and I don't care about the estimate it does not change my opinion on the law at all at the end of the day the association is responsible at the end of the day the township is not responsible but you're now looking at a lawsuit from a third party am south that you weren't looking at until Thursday so you're duty bound to follow the engineers comments unless there is evidence to the contrary that is substantial the five of you may consider the threat of a lawsuit a substantial threat and if you do you can carry this motion if you choose it is my opinion that the law the municipal land use act does not permit it but you have certain limited discretion and it's limited only because by virtue of what I th consider to be a new fact and that is the potential that we're buying a lawsuit now if you don't take action you're potentially buying a lawsuit from the bank and that provides for attorneys fees and cost so you got two different risks away uh, I harbor no opinions to hurt these people um, but the bottom line is that this basin was already inspected and signed off on but either way you might be looking at a lawsuit so you're the finders of the fact that's a general outline of the law I could be much more specific if you choose me to do so I will um, but that's kind of the framework uh, of where we find ourselves and where you find yourselves the law is very clear on the obligations of a governing body to follow the recommendations of the uh, engineer the history of this particular case is very clear um, but like I said the only new fact you got is AM South says you release the money you're gonna get sued well, I, listen, um, at the end of the day, the threat of a lawsuit shouldn't stop us from, um, I, I understand that you and Mr. Cheek already had a meeting with, and I appreciate you guys doing that with Mr. Philippone, reaching out to the residents and trying to um, come to, uh, you know, a, a amicable resolution for all parties involved. Um, but I, you know, I don't want to sit here and have a res I mean, a threat of a lawsuit keep me from making the decision, which ultimately might be the decision that we have on the table this evening. Um, but um, at the end of the day, I personally would like a little more information, um, maybe to be brought into the fold on this and, 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 and um, have the entire committee brought up to speed. Um, personally, I think that would be the right thing to do at this time. But I'm one member of this committee, and I would, I would ask committee members to weigh in at, at this time on, on your opinion. When was the basin approved, <laughs> accepted and approved? 2008. So this I'm basin this basin was designed by the decision and resolution of the planning board to be topsoil and seeded grass and that's what happened here. it was never designed to be a, a, a basin that infiltrated in 72 hours nothing is going to change my mind on that score okay but you have to weigh as the finders of fact what you consider that lawsuit to be as compared to the lawsuit of Am West or Am South, I I I I feel and I feel like the homeowners like no one's gotten the real story for anything, and this has gone so long that if we extend it two weeks till the next meeting to give them time to digest everything and whatnot, and then make a decision next meeting that. The lawsuits I mean this has been going on for how long that will they come after us for in two weeks will they threaten us and then we just tell them we're making a decision September 7th I, I, I could tell you that they will come after you and EM South will come after you if you release so pick your poison so we're, we're in a catch-22 well, I, well, it's not, I, Carl, it's not going to change my opinion on the law. Oh, no, I, I, I'm not asking you to change your opinion on the law. I mean, we're, we're, we're in this predicament no matter what. Right. 
I think the out that Tommy Sammy wrote in the resolution was that you're approving the release of the money, but not in, that money will not be released until such time as American Southern does their accounting. So the money's not going out in the next two weeks to anybody because the accounting work isn't going to be done by American South to decide whether or not the money was appropriate expended. If they come back and tell you that there was a error in expenditures, uh, you may have to redo the resolution at that point in time. I, the the I, resolution is drafted says exactly what Peter's saying because if you approve the resolution, you're approving the release of the money subject to the conduct of the bank giving an accounting to Am South. That could happen in a day. That could happen in two weeks. I can't say. I don't know what it is. I would like to see that before we we take action on this. Um, so, was that a motion that you formed, Mr. Cheek, or you? I'll make that a motion. There is a motion to table this for a two-week period while we wait, um, gather more information, and um, hopefully see the results of AMSELF's, AMSELF's audit. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Rita, I would definitely like a roll call on this one, please. Mr. Chi? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Batali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. Oh, and, yes, and I do want to just preference one thing. Um, Mr. Philippone uh, has been our township engineer for how many years now? Six for six years. Um, he is absolutely regarded um, as probably one of the best we've ever had. Um, I do want to say that in every instance I've had any dealings with him or any other member of the public has dealings with him, he gets back to people in a timely manner. And um, I just I just want to defend that because Steve, we appreciate everything you do and how responsive you are to the needs of the residents in this town in every situation. So I just want to thank you for that. Okay. Um, all right. Um, next, we'll move on to item eight, which is personnel. And folks, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Um, personnel is uh, a resolution amending resolution 2021-0159 to appoint Danielle Kelly as land use administrator at $56,000 annually. Committee? I'll move. Second. Yeah, that includes. That's everything. Yep. Um, I have a motion and a second. Uh, Rita, could I get a roll call, please? Mr. Chi? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. And I don't want to put words in our planning board chairman's mouth, but I know that he supports this wholeheartedly. So, all right. Um, next, we'll move on to 9A, um, regular meeting minutes of August 2nd, 2021. Committee? So moved. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. B, minutes for the executive session meeting minutes of August 2nd, 2021. So moved. I have a motion. Second. 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 Roll call, Rita, please. Mr. Chi? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Batali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carry. Uh, approval C, minutes, release of closed session minutes. So moved. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Roll call, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All yes and carry. Next, uh, D, bill, bill list total of $1,906,831.08. So moved. Mo second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mr. Chief? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. I'm oh, just yes. laughing I because. The deputy mayor approved this I, one and not last month. It, it was cricket. The, the left side of the yeah. this was just <laughs> quiet over here last week. Um, we'll move on to 10 uh, of reports. Mr. Administrator? I have nothing, Mayor. Mr. Solicitor? Mr. Engineer. Yeah, Mayor and Committee, just a few items. Uh, Lake Lenape Dam, I just want to report that um, in speaking with the county engineer's office, uh, WSP is still going through their uh, awaiting Pinelands in the DEP uh, review for the powerhouse uh, application they have in with them. Uh, we, we have a, a dam committee meeting next Monday afternoon at uh, 2 o'clock. Um, 
Atlantic Avenue, I want to report that the milling and paving were completed last week, uh, actually August 6th, and, and last Friday they completed the striping. Um, I had a chance to walk the road with uh, the DOT they, uh, on Friday. They're the ones that are going to uh, fund the project. So uh, we're uh, finalizing some shoulder restoration and a little bit more work out there, but we're, we're in the process of wrapping up uh, Atlantic Avenue. Um, New York Avenue Bridge, Art Schenker was here and he, he mentioned that there's a uh, sort of a joint contract between the county and the MUA on, on the water line that they're working on contracts. I want to report that the County Board of Freeholders tomorrow are scheduled to approve the construction contract for uh, the, the low bid contractor. Um, work will begin September 1st on the bridge. The planking, the, the precast pre planking is due to arrive on October 8th, and, and the county's telling me the bridge should be completed, uh, barring any incidences, by Thanksgiving. So well, uh, Atlantic, I'm sorry, New York Avenue should be opened up again by Thanksgiving, is what I'm told. That's, That's good excellent. news. I hope that they can fit that time schedule. Yep. Um, the, the 2021 road program, this, these are the three roads we put out to bid. We put out Grand Avenue, Harley, and South. I have bid opening next Thursday morning for those three contracts. Um, we hope they come in at the, uh, my engineer's estimate. If they do, we, we, we hope to award those. We have uh, Grand as the prime, as the base bid. We have Harley and South as the, as the two alternates. So we're hoping all three roads will come in at the, at the budget that we put aside. AC so. index went down a dollar. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, that's good news. But it didn't go up. <laughs> that's good news. So that concludes my report, Mayor and Committee. Thank you, Mr. Philippon. Um, Could I ask him a question? Of course. Um, I'm just curious. I know it isn't part of our township uh, permit, but that um, retention basin near Cologne Avenue, what is happening with that? It doesn't seem to be proceeding. I is that a retention basin? It's the 322 job that you and I talked 322 about 322 project. Oh. Um, I, <laughs> what's happening? I can tell you what's happening. Um, South State has the contract. South State, their completion date for that contract is in November. And that hurts us because we've suffered through the summer. We suffered with, you know, asphalt aprons to businesses that needed to, we needed to get at South State in there and the DOT to make sure they get milled so that the residents won't, won't hit that hard bump going in businesses. There, there's, I inquired, uh, the Deputy Mayor contacted me recently and said, what is it going to take to finish the project? I contacted uh, South State and South State is, they've informed me that there's some issues with the DOT and the electrical part of the project. There's some electrical issues with design. DOT is, is resolving those issues right now. And it's probably going to take another month is what I'm being told. As far as the drainage, this would be the basin or the Clone Avenue basin. Yeah. I, I don't have a good answer to that question. I, I could inquire. Yeah, I was looking at that gigantic hill of soil and it's now starting to have grass growing on it. P pretty soon it's going to just be covered over. Just an I, observation. I will look into it and get back to you. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Hi, uh, Township Committee members. Uh, Ms. Link? Oh, um, I'm going to pass on this. Okay. <laughs> Deputy Mayor? Um, night of Lights, next Saturday night. Um, hope to be, boats hope to be in the basin uh, 845 to 9 o'clock, somewhere around in there. Um, so... Please come on down, take a look, and if you're driving through, please be careful because uh, last year, I think the whole bulkhead was uh, was filled with cars and people. So hopefully, same thing again this year. Um, kind of in the, in the same neighborhood there, I want to give kudos to the to our to our chief, to the police department, for taking care of um, parking issues that were going on down there. Um, was very quick to 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 come to a. To, to make some moves and make some things happen and uh, helped out a local business. And uh, um, just kudos to them for getting that squared away. That's, that's fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else going on. No, that's it, really. 
Okay. Well, I want to talk about Reagan, Maddie, miss you, love you, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Mr. Chief. I echo the Deputy Mayor's sentiments exactly uh, with the Knights of Lights and the parking problem as well. That we just did with the parking problem, we just didn't go one step and then stop. We're continuing to monitor it and try to make a bad situation the best we possibly can. So good for everyone. And that's it for me. Rodney? Go with this. Okay. Um. Well, I, uh, I do want to just to, and to Carl's point, um, you know, it is nice to see when we can come together as a township and uh, uh, balance public safety and the needs of our businesses uh, to help them thrive. Um, so I do appreciate the efforts put forth and uh, I believe that we did come up with a, uh, a, a good resolution that's that again balances public safety and the needs of our, our local businesses. Um, with that, I will open it up to the public. Uh, is there anyone in the public that wishes to speak? Mr. Shry? Thank you. Uh, on the lines of the, uh, uh, on the subject of the uh, night of lights and the parking, mm -hmm. um, this has been an ongoing problem. It's not just this year. Um, the, the zoning enforcement in that area continues to get worse. It's a detriment to the townships in that particular area, health, self, health safety, and welfare. Uh, I'm not sure where to start in, in any particular order. Um, so I'll start with the, this, uh, the four lots. Um, which is Freddie J's, there's a lot, lot three, and then Neville's, there's four lots there. It's all being consolidated under one owner now. Um, there's an expansion of Freddie J's into the lot three. I, you'll have to look at this. I apologize, I don't have a map, mm -hmm. but if you're familiar with, you may be familiar with, Mr. Mayor, I think you are. Yes. Uh, there are no parking approvals on lot three. Um, Mr. Neville came before uh, submitted to the zoning board, I believe last year, um, to look at that whole area. Um, submitted plans, that plan was withdrawn, and now those plans or those concepts are continuing bit by bit to be implemented without the proper um, approvals. Continues to get worse. Um, I've spoken with the uh, zoning officer the zoning officer actually agrees with the violations, but says they're okay at the same time. Okay. Uh, with respect to Sugar Hill Inn, of course everybody wants businesses to prosper. No question there. And I think uh, Charlie, you and I have often agreed that the zoning board and the planning board and the township committee wants to work with businesses. Absolutely. But they want to do it right. All you have, everybody plays by the same rules. You make your application before the zoning board, the planning board, and in my experience, the zoning board and the planning board have always been favorable, particularly the zoning board that I've served on. They want to work with the applicants to make the, give them the variances and uses they need to uh, promote their business, yet comply with the safety, the traffic uh, uh, engineer or planner or engineer. This is not happening there. And I can tell you that document, you know, there's documentation back to 2015 where the owner at that time, uh, Mr. Sartorio was in charge of the uh, planning office. They sat down, they came to an agreement to uh, come before the uh, zoning board with a, a workshop, then a plan, and then a hearing, and, at that, and then they, there was an agreement between the township and the property owner, prior property owner, and it was never followed through. Right. Yeah, you know that. And this has been happening all the way until now. <coughs> uh, the other day, uh, there was a, a illegal parking across where the old gas station was. It was, cars were double parked. The only way to unpark was the back going to 559. There's signs right there that says, do not park here. Okay. 
Uh, after that, there were, uh, I think, police signs along River Road indicating there would be no parking, particularly because you can't get through, okay? And the, 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 the uh, residents there, there was parking. Now, I, I, I noticed today that now there have been, uh, it appears to be, I don't know, township installed parking, no parking signs, very strategically placed. However, the woods has been cut back uh, along there. And, you know, again, I'll say we need to work with the businesses. There's no question about that. But when, I, I don't remember seeing a parking ordinance on that street to um, allow that. It's, usually signs are very specifically placed. Uh, it looks like, looks like there's been cutting into private property. Other property, uh, private property, it seems you're allowed to park on it. So given my uh, communication with our zoning officer, who is the enforcement officer, and seemed to be getting nowhere with municipal land use law, our own ordinances, and enforcement, I would respectfully ask that we step it up to a higher, uh, one with more experience. Uh, and I think you uh, mentioned uh, uh, Mr. Philippone's experience and willing to work with our business community. Uh, Mr. Dixon, the uh, traffic engineer, is a, is a leading expert in New Jersey on traffic engineering. Um, and, and our planner, our landscape engineer, I think it needs to go to another step to finally resolve the zoning issues on those, that, that area. It used to be that was a residential area many years ago. You know that. Um, it was not too long ago, uh, rezoned uh, village commercial. Uh, it, it doesn't look very nice there. We've got yellow cones, we've got chain, and we, it just, uh, it's, 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 it's not very pleasant. It could be a very nice area. Uh, there could be shared parking. Planning board, zoning board have worked with the businesses to share parking. Um, that's probably something that should be looked at. I don't know. But I think the committee would do the township and that area a big uh, favor by going above our zoning officer and ask our township engineer, traffic engineer, and uh, planner to, uh, in any way you can, encourage that zoning application or maybe a planning application of lots one, two, three, and five, which Mr. Neville owns all of them, mm -hmm. to come back with the plan and have it finally resolved because it's going nowhere fast. So thank you for your attention. Bruce, I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Well, I, think, uh, I think Mr. Nebel does have a plan for that corner. Well, I, 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 I think uh, it was moving forward. And then uh, when he bought Freddie J's and tried to do some work in the parking lot there, um, next thing you know, there was complaints about what was going on in that parking lot. So he kind of stopped what he was doing. So. Well, if I, if I can uh, just add on to that, there was a official plan submitted to the zoning board while I sat on the zoning board for that, for all four properties, lots one, two, three, and five. And uh, it was, there was a preliminary, there, there were engineers, there were uh, uh, zoning board professionals reports uh, submitted with that plan and after that the plan was withdrawn so the answer is yes there was a plan but there is none to my knowledge on file to be heard before whichever board is appropriate i know there are some use variances on lot three which has if you if you're familiar it has the garage and that's the only thing there and Charlie, you well remember that uh, the, the reason the house isn't there is because there was a uh, demolition permit. It was demolition by neglect. I think that may be a matter of opinion, but that's what happened. So, but there are no approvals. There are no commercial uh, approvals for Lot 3. However, the zoning officer, in an email to me, affirmed 
that employees from Neville's Auto and Freddie J's are using that pr uh, property for um, parking. Employee parking is part of the traffic uh, parking ordinance. You have to allow uh, uh, spots. It doesn't matter who's parking there. If there's a vehicle on the property, there's a vehicle on the property, and there are no approvals. Again, there was a plan. It was withdrawn. They're doing some uh, clear cutting on uh, lot five. It's really hard to tell because, you, you know, you, unless you survey, you don't know what work is done on what property. So all I'm asking is that the, that the township uh, use their resources to set all of these long um, um, uh, zoning issues and parking uh, in that area. I mean, it can be done. It, it, this township has been doing big plans for decades, and this is a relatively small one, but it's a real problem. And it's in CAFRA, there's, there's a county road. I mean, there's tons of uh, uh, authorities that have uh, input into this. But it's going to take, I think, this committee to give the authority or the responsibility to our professionals to once and for all look into it and resolve it, and it'll be done. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public? Mr. Nelson? Oh, real quick, I just wanted to give a quick update for the school board. Um, we. So you guys know, sent out a flyer yesterday, essentially canceling our in-person orientation for Davies specifically, but the other schools will fall in place. And there's a lot of controversy over that. That's just the adult portion because the Atlantic uh, County Health Department said we had to do contact tracing for all those parents. So as you can imagine, that would be very hard to determine where those parents and who they stood next to for those three hours with 900 kids. So. Uh, we are doing a virtual version of that, and then the, we'll bring the kids in in smaller groups uh, over the next couple of weeks to be able to do their thing. And um, I keep it short because I know everything Thank else you. Long. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Jerry. Question. Oh, go ahead. You go. Um, that little playground at Shaner, yes. what's happening there? We are uh, dismantling that, turn that into a parking lot because there was concerns about uh, foot traffic that is not of the type we want and move the kids back onto the others, put the building between the kids and that kind of traffic and then uh, leverage that for additional parking for the teachers and try to bring them onto our side. The last, uh, his last update included those comments. Yeah, I, I just, I go by yeah, there. that's what we're doing. I have a qu um, go ahead. I have a question on this too. Well, go ahead. The, the, I saw the I saw the playground torn up. Um, you know that might be a little excessive torn up, but it's, it's so I'm about ready to go to you know bid on Third Street. So I contacted your architect two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't. I, I said to him, if you're doing any work, I, I heard uh, possibly that a parking lot was going there. And the reason I'm asking these questions is if I'm designing a project on Third Street. If, if you need a curb cut, if I, I want to coordinate it with whatever you you have planned, I want to okay. I want a clean coordination between what you, your plans are and the township's plans, but your your architect wasn't aware of any immediate plans for that. It, well, or I I am um, having me with uh, the superintendent tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and I will talk to him specifically about that item. Okay. And make sure that him, Ian, and you are on the same page. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. What's with the school opening up, um, and I know that the staffing problems that I have, it, it, you know, with, with where I work, um, what is, do you have any type of contingency plan for busing sh shortages that I'm sure are going to come forward? Well, this is the first time I've ever said that we don't own the contract with uh, a shepherd, so it's not my problem. <laughs> but uh, more, <laughs> <That's a good laughs> answer. but more than likely, what will happen will be the unfortunate truth is that parents will continue to be scared of COVID and putting their kids on the bus, and and uh, will continue to probably lessen the load on the buses. So I think last year you didn't see that much of an impact, because although the buses ran the additional routes, um, there was typically only two or three kids on a big yellow bus. 
So they would not really even stop. They would kind of just slow down and move on. So the buses, if they actually had all the kids on it, we'd probably have a, a scheduling problem just because uh, it would take two hours to get wow. pick up all the kids. So, I mean, I guess I hope that kind of continues on that trend. Uh, but Shepard certainly did have a problem, and I would imagine they continue to have a problem with that. So that, that contract is owned by uh, Greater Egg, and we are a subcontractor off of, it, off of it. So in years past, we've had zero voice in it. And other, other members that have been on the school board, uh, well aware of, we've had all kinds of problems with that contract. So first of all, I would like to say that uh, I don't own the contract. So. <laughs> but uh, hopefully it will continue to be uh, not as important this year because of the continued concern about COVID. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks, Thanks Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Um, is there anyone else in the public that wishes to speak? Please. Hello, my name is Michael. Um, I believe I'm the last remaining resident of Glen Eyre here, so I'm not speaking on behalf of Glen Eyre. I'm speaking on behalf of myself. Okay. Um, just in my observations over the scenarios that have occurred. Um, I don't believe that the residents feel that either Mr. Salmon or Mr. Philippone have acted unethically or not in or not against the interests of the residents. So it was unfortunate you, you've had to feel like you had to say that you weren't acting against us. I don't believe we feel that way. So I just want to assure you that <coughs> you don't feel that way. I bless you. Bless you. Thank you. I, we certainly heard you, uh, Mr. Mayor, again, Philip Holm, uh, certainly uh, speak your praises. Again, I don't believe we've attacked either of them in, the, in a professional or a personal manner. Um, fact does remain that emails were sent that he was copied on, but that doesn't mean he has to respond. That doesn't mean he's got all of them. Those things are possible. We've all missed things, and we get it. So we don't want it to feel like there's an adversarial role. Um, I do believe, as well, it would be a disservice, so the township would be doing itself a disservice if they took a position moving forward at all, and I'm not saying you have, but if you took a position that we feel the township has done something wrong. The reason we came to the township was for some assistance in helping correct something that we feel was done wrong, whether it was in 2002, 3, 4, 8, 12, 14, or beyond. Somewhere along the way, we feel something was done improperly, not saying purposefully improperly, but something was done incorrectly. Um, and to have a, have a community of 37 homes potentially be on the hook for a considerable amount of money to make something into within regulations, which is all we want it to be done is to work with whatever the regulations are. Um, and again, is it a, a, I'm not accusing if it's Univest or other people mentioned the, the builder, going back to the original, the new ones, whatever it is, but just some assistance in saying, look, something quite doesn't seem right here that okay, it was the base, it was designed properly, signed off in 08, when the reality is less than half of the homes were completed. So the, the, the concern was what has occurred in those dozen years since that has put the basin in the position that it is. We just want some help in resolution of that. And that, again, not speaking on behalf of the residents as a whole or the board, speaking of my own opinion, being, uh, intimately knowledgeable of a lot of the conversations and communication that's gone on. And just leave it at that. You know, we're just residents. We enjoy living here. I know some of the other members of the public on the other topics. We love living here. And we want to continue to love living here. So and we appreciate that. So I, I, I hope that you saw this evening the action that we did take is, you know, we, 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 we want to help mediate this situation the best we can yeah. um, so we're, we're going to gather a little more information mr salmon made his point well known um, and his legal opinion well known sure. but um, you know again we're here to assist in any way we can and we're going to uh, gather some information and, and we'll reconvene in, in and again we it, it very well seems the bond and we talked about it friday the bond itself differential from the basin issue should it be released? And again, I know you said there was some other things with the, the bank or the other. That's their deal. That's fine. It's just, again, just something doesn't seem right with it. Now, I know we talked about it two weeks ago, the residents that were here, some other people, new people came up and brought up the topic of health and welfare and mosquitoes, the kids, the children being afraid to be outside. Those are things that regardless of the ultimate outcome and who does what or this, 
I would have thought from two weeks ago, and I said this to a couple of folks, I said, I wouldn't be surprised if the township says, hey, we're going to at least come out and take a look and check for mosquitoes or spray some mosquitoes. It didn't happen, and that's fine. But those are the things where it's little stuff that could go a long way, too. We're still living there. We're still living. We're still in the, we're in August. It's one of the hottest months here, right? September creeps to be pretty hot, too. Mosquitoes are going to be an issue. It'd be great to get some temporary remedy until we can solve, obviously, the root issue of it. So again, it's just those sorts of things of considerations, just general considerations to think about. I appreciate again, your comments. Thank you. Regardless, and again, to you guys, what you saw Friday was just people who were frustrated that after months and months and months of being told something by, I'll say Univest, but whoever, and then to find out something different, that was just frustration, but I don't believe there was any personal thoughts or any improprieties thought of at all from those guys. So don't don't take that as well. And, uh, Mr. Sheik was there as well. Hopefully you didn't think that was the impression. It was of us being frustrated about our living environment. So we appreciate your yeah. comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else in the public that wishes to speak? Hearing none. Make a um, motion to close. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion to close. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, at this point, uh, I will entertain a motion uh, to adjourn to executive session. Let it be known that we will not be reconvening in public. Um, so I'll entertain. So moved. I have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. Resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Hamilton that this meeting be adjourned to an executive session to okay, that's the following I matters, that's which is public somewhere. discussion pursuant to the New Jersey Open oh, wow. Public Meetings Law, you know, Teamsters you know, contract okay. negotiations. Be it further resolved that the governing body will not reconvene in public session to confirm the results. Be it further resolved that the results of the executive session shall be made known as soon as the basis for confidentiality is no longer confidential. Oh,